Hello everybody, welcome to my channel, 10 Ways to Wear It. I'm Alicia and on this channel, I take one fashion item or one fashion trend and show you all 10 different ways to wear it. But obviously that is not what we are doing today. Welcome to my kitchen. I've been telling you all that I want to do cooking videos and today we are kicking it off. We are going to be making not one, not two, but three fall soups and they're all one pot soups. They're super affordable, they're very easy to make and they are delicious. You can easily increase the portions I'm gonna be sharing to feed your entire family. As we get into our cozy weather, these recipes are definitely going to come in handy and you can always freeze them and just unthaw them and heat them up later. I got so many good tips for y'all in today's video while we make these soups. So if you want to make three one pot fall soups, let's go ahead and get into this video. I'm strapped on my apron. I'm ready. Okay, you guys, so I have positioned you in my cooking area. So before I jump into the first soup, I wanted to share some tips and tricks because y'all know I like to do that. When you are making soups, if you're gonna be sending some home with people or if you're gonna be storing them, your best friends is gonna be containers, like plastic containers or glass containers. I like to use these to give soup to people to take home and also to take soup to work. I get these on Amazon and I usually order them in like packs of 25 to 40 and I love these containers. So these are like soup containers. When it comes to storing my soups, I like to use these types of containers. This is by Ziploc and they stack so nicely in my deep freezer, which is right there. It makes it so much easier. And then I also like to buy these on Amazon, which are great to take soup to work or if you're giving soup away to people they are great. So I wanted to share those containers because I will be putting the soups in these once it's done. So let's, let's go ahead and get into the first soup, which is gonna be taco soup. Okay, so really quickly, I wanted to go over the ingredients for the taco soup. It is so flavorful and delicious, but also really easy to make. I use this store-bought pico de gallo. It's about $3.99 at the grocery store, but you can make your own. All you need is jalapenos, onions, tomatoes, and cilantro. I also buy the pre-diced tomatoes. You're gonna need those for the soup. Green onions to garnish. This has red, green, and yellow bell peppers, and they're finely diced. Of course, diced onion, fresh organic cilantro, black beans, which I have the Bush's black beans, the seasoned ones. I like to add corn to my taco soup, even though it doesn't typically go in a taco. I like to add this small can of corn. If you don't want to buy the pico de gallo, you can use Rotel. I won't be using Rotel in mine today because I have the fresh pico de gallo, but if you want, you can use this in place of the fresh pico de gallo and you can buy that on the shelf from the grocery store. Also the star of the show, of course, grass fed ground beef, organic beef but you can also replace this with ground turkey or ground chicken. You're gonna need a couple of limes, avocado. To make the soup base, you're gonna need gourmet nacho sauce or any cheese sauce. You can also use Velveeta. You're gonna need some sour cream for garnishing, half and half, and of course, chicken broth. And I also have my utensils I'll be using laid out here. I have my kitchen shears, a spoon, I have my can opener to open the cans and I have some bowls for prep. So those are the ingredients. That's what I'll be using. So let's get into this recipe. I'm so sorry, you guys, but I forgot to mention the seasoning for the soup. Okay, amateur move. But I'm gonna be using this original taco seasoning by McCormick's. Um, it is a full salt version, so it's not the low sodium, so I won't be adding too much salt because this is definitely salty. But I'll also be adding some cayenne pepper. I'll be adding some garlic powder and I will be adding a couple of bay leaves to the soup base. So pretty simple. The taco seasoning has chili powder, it has cumin, it has basically all the seasonings for a Latin soup in it already, so I don't have to add too many other things. So that's a tip for you guys to make it a lot easier. Use this taco seasoning or whichever brand that you prefer. This was on sale, so this is what I got. So let's go ahead and make this soup. Okay, so my pot has been heating up, so I went ahead and added the onions as well as the bell peppers to the pot. I just have some vegetable oil in there. Now I'm gonna add some salt and not too much, just a little bit, maybe two teaspoons. And I'm also gonna go in with two teaspoons of black pepper because we want the soup to have really good flavor and really good seasoning. So gonna go in with that. I'm also gonna go in with that cayenne pepper on top of the vegetables. I want the soup to have a nice little spice to it. 
and I'm gonna go in with some of the garlic powder. Give that a nice little stir and I'm gonna let those vegetables cook down until they're translucent and then I will add my ground beef. The veggies have gotten quite translucent and soft, so I went in with my ground beef, and this is about a pound of ground beef. The portions that I'm making for the soup today are basically just portions for me to have this week at work, but you can definitely do two, ground, two pounds of ground beef if you want to have more for like a larger group of people, so just keep that in mind. Um, I'll do my best to put the exact measurements in the description, but I don't really cook with recipes, I just cook from my heart, and with my instincts, like my grandmother taught me. So I'll do my best to get you guys an actual like recipe with the portions that I'm using today. But now that that meat is starting to brown, I'm gonna go in with my taco seasoning. I'm not gonna drain the meat first. I want um, some of the fat to stay in there. So I will drain out some a little bit later, but I'm gonna go ahead and pour the taco seasoning in there. So we're gonna go in with that entire pack to season our soup. Now I'm just gonna continue to break up that meat using my potato masher. This is a great way to break up ground beef, you guys. Just use a potato masher instead of trying to do it with the spoon. Makes things a lot easier. And I don't wanna scrape my beautiful caraway pot. This pot is by caraway, so I'm just using something that won't scrape my pot. Caraway makes the most amazing pots and pans. You guys know I um, did a video with them a while back, so I work with them and I just love their cookware. Like. No sponsorship here, I just love their cookware, like seriously, so. Don't wanna scrape my pot, but I'm gonna let that brown and then I'll be right back. Alrighty, so now that the meat is nice and brown, I'm ready to go ahead and basically start pulling the soup together. The first thing I'm gonna do is drain out some of the grease and I'm just gonna use trusty old paper towel to do that. I wouldn't recommend this if you're not used to cooking because it's, you know, you really shouldn't. It's not safe, but this is a great way to like pick up some of the grease out of the pot. Just make sure you don't touch the edge of the pot like I just did. <laughs> But there, that's a good amount of grease that is now gone. So now I'm gonna start going in with my other ingredients. So first we're gonna go in with our corn. Go ahead and dump that in. Next we're gonna go in with our black beans. And I don't wanna use the whole can, so I'm gonna save some back. That's about enough. Give that a little stir. Next, I'm gonna go in with my pico de gallo and I'm gonna add this entire container as well as all of the juice that's in there. I'm also gonna squeeze in an entire lime at this point. I'm trying to do this one-handed, but I really should do this two-handed. <laughs> I love a good lime flavor in this taco soup. Okay, I'm also gonna go ahead and go in with a couple of those bay leaves and I don't want those to break up so I'm just gonna be careful not to break those up and now we're ready to add our actual soup ingredients. Okay, so I just went in with the entire can of nacho cheese and I'm gonna just give that a little stir, try not to break my bay leaves. Now I'm gonna go in with some Mexican style cheese blend. This is by Lucerne and I'm using about half of that um, bag. I don't know if I mentioned that as part of my ingredients. I think I forgot it in the refrigerator but I'm, I am gonna add some cheese to this soup because it'll help to thicken it up without me having to add cornstarch to the soup. Now I'm gonna go in with my chicken broth. 
And I'm gonna use this entire container and then I'll see if I need to add more after I add this entire container. Like I said, I cook based on instincts, you guys, so not always measurements. Sometimes measurements don't do it. So let's see how we're looking with that one container. It's looking pretty good. The soup is definitely going to thicken as it sits. And you can always add a cornstarch slurry if it's too watery and you want it thicker. You can always add a cornstarch slurry to the soup. But I love adding that pico de gallo because it also has cilantro in it. I am gonna add more cilantro because I really like cilantro. But that pico de gallo just has all the ingredients you need in there. So, gotta love that. And this is how the soup is looking so far. I'm gonna let it simmer for about 10 minutes and then I'm gonna go in with my half and half and then we'll make a bowl of this soup and move on to the next one. Alrighty, so the soup has come to a very nice rolling boil. It is just about done. It's nice and thick. The ingredients are melting. Those bay leaves are flavoring the soup base and it looks amazing. So now I'm gonna go ahead and pour in some of my half and half. And this is just gonna add a richness to the soup, not too much. You can also use heavy whipping cream if you wanna use something even thicker, but half and half seems to work great for me because like I said, this soup does start to thicken a lot as it sits. So you don't wanna go too, too thick on it. And then it's gonna be like super, super thick, almost like a, a Rotel dip. <laughs> you want it to be more like a soup. So now I'm gonna go ahead and just turn you guys around just to show you the garnish for the soup. So I have some diced avocado here, a little bit of that Mexican style cheese. I have some limes that I've cut up, tomatoes, those diced tomatoes that I bought, green onions and some cilantro and then of course some sour cream. I have the other half of my avocado with the seeds still in it so it'll last me until I eat some more soup. And then this is how I store my herbs. I wrap them in a wet paper cloth, not so much wet but damp. Um, paper towel and then I put them in a airtight storage bag and put those in the refrigerator. So I'm gonna put those away, but these are the garnishments. Now we're gonna go ahead and make a bowl of soup. Okay, you guys, so I have my bowl here. I'm gonna try to do this and not make a mess all over my stove but I'm gonna go ahead and ladle in some of the soup. I like to first go for the chunky bits first and then I go for the like soup base after and I already got some on the stove. <laughs> but it's okay, I gotta clean it anyway. I always clean my stove in between cooking. All right, now we're gonna go for some of that soup. Alrighty, so I have my soup here and I'm now gonna go ahead and garnish it. I'm gonna first go in with some of this cheese right in the middle. Then I'm gonna sprinkle in some tomato. Then I think I'm gonna go ahead and add some avocado right there in the middle. Then some cilantro. Ooh, that's a lot. <laughs> I'm also gonna go in with some of the green onions. And last but not least, I'm gonna go in with some sour cream. Let's see if I can do this one-handed. Got cilantro all over the bottle. I like a lot of sour cream. <laughs> and of course we have our lime wedge. I'm gonna squeeze a little bit on there. I have cilantro all over my, my hand, sticky. I'm just gonna put my lime right there. So that is the soup all garnished and ready to eat. It looks amazing. So I'm gonna taste it on camera with you guys. Okay, you guys, so the moment of truth, we are going to taste the soup. This is the taco soup. And it is hot, baby, but I'm gonna dig in here. Mmm, it's good. It's so cheesy. It is cheesy, it's good though. Mmm, it tastes so naughty. Mm. Mm. And the fresh toppings, like the crunch of the green onion and stuff on top, and the creamy avocado, you gotta add the little toppings at the end. That sour cream, the little cool sour cream against the hot soup. Mmm, 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 mmm. Mmm, bomb. 
Okay, you guys, so the next soup that we're going to be making is sausage, kale, and potato soup. It's also known as Zupa Toscana at Olive Garden, so we're gonna be making the at-home version of that. So I have all of my ingredients laid out. This one is super simple, and it is my favorite soup, absolute favorite of any soup. This is my favorite. So I'm gonna bring you guys over, show you the ingredients, and then we'll make the soup. So here are the ingredients you're going to need for the sausage, kale, and potato soup. I have some organic flat leaf parsley here. I have red pepper flakes that I've measured out. Onions. These are the diced onions. These are the other ones that I didn't use from the last soup. I have my bay leaves. I have some rubbed sage. These are red potatoes. These are medium-sized red potatoes that I cut into half moons. And I use three medium-sized potatoes. I have more shredded organic kale from Trader Joe's. You can use curly kale, you can use dark kale, whatever kale floats your boat. For me, I prefer the pre-washed, cut-up kale. Um, yes, I throw it in the pot. I say my grace and the Lord always protects me. <laughs> But you're gonna need some kale. You're also gonna need chicken broth or you can use vegetable broth and you can substitute the sausage in this soup for mushrooms if you are vegetarian. And of course you can substitute the cheeses and the creams, um, however you do that. <laughs> but you're gonna need some sausage. I prefer to use this Jimmy Dean sage sausage, but you can always use regular sausage, whatever's on sale, and then just add some sage to it like this rubbed sage. So I have my sausage here here butter I have some thyme I also have garlic this is a very garlicky soup Parmesan cheese I have a lot here because I like this soup nice and cheesy and then I have some heavy whipping cream to make the soup nice and rich so now that we have everything laid out my pot is starting to smoke so let's go ahead and get these onions and garlic in the pot alrighty so my onions got nice and soft so I went ahead and added my sage sausage and broke it up really good using my potato masher and now that the meat is starting to brown quite a bit I'm gonna go in with my seasonings and my garlic I don't want my garlic to burn so that's why I'm adding it at this point but I'm gonna go ahead and dump in the garlic that I have minced up I'm also gonna dump in some of these red pepper flakes I'm also going to go in with my rubbed sage add that into the pot sorry the camera's a little blurry I'm also going to add some of this Kinder's garlic salt to season things up. Give it a little stir. Let the garlic cook for a minute until it's fragrant. And then this soup comes together super fast. Um, once this garlic cooks for a minute or so, I'm going to add the butter, I'm going to add the potatoes, I'm going to add the chicken broth, and I'm going to start adding the Parmesan. I don't add a lot of Parmesan to the soup. Um, I do add quite a bit when I garnish because you know how at Olive Garden when they come around and say tell me when to stop. <laughs> it's like you just look at them like I'm not. <laughs> but I'm going to add the kale as well and then everything's going to go ahead and cook together, throw in those bay leaves and yeah, this soup comes together really, really fast. So you guys saw me add most of those ingredients. I added the chicken broth, the kale, the potatoes. I added the bay leaves um, and pretty much everything else except the heavy whipping cream and the Parmesan and the parsley. Those are the only things that are not in the pot. I'm gonna go ahead and let this come to a boil and then I will add the heavy cream, pour in some of my Parmesan and plate it up and we'll taste it. 
the potatoes are sliced very thinly so that they can cook fast so just a tip for you guys if you want the soup to cook fast if you're trying to prepare it in like 30 minutes or less slice the potatoes super thin and it'll cook very fast okay so now that this has come to a really good rolling boil and everything has pretty much cooked down, wilted down, softened up, all the flavors have melded. Um, I went ahead and picked out my thyme stems because I did just put the entire stem in there, so I found the three that I put in there. So I picked those out already. Now we're gonna go in with our heavy cream. This is where the richness comes into the soup, and you can make it as rich as you want. Sorry, it's just a little sizzle. You can make it as rich as you want. Um, I like mine creamy, so I do add a good amount of the heavy cream, but um, you can hold back however you want to do it. It's up to you, but it's, all, it's still gonna taste amazing, but I like mine nice and creamy. I'm also gonna go in with my Parmesan cheese, and I reserved some back for garnishment, but I'm gonna go in with about I guess that's about a cup and a half, maybe two cups of that freshly grated Parmesan. Parmesan is the one cheese I do not skimp on. I will actually grate it myself because I just don't trust the Parmesan that you buy. They say it has all kinds of additives. So it's the one cheese that I will spend money on and that I'll just grate myself. <laughs> I do grate cheddar myself sometimes, but sometimes I use the shortcut and use the bags, but Parmesan is the one that I'm like, okay. Time to put in that elbow grease. But now that I've added my heavy cream and my Parmesan, I'm gonna let the soup come back to a boil. We'll give it a taste and then we'll move on to our last soup, which is the easiest one. Okay, you guys, so the soup is all done. I let it boil for about another 15 minutes after I added the heavy cream, just to make sure all the potatoes were nice and soft and the kale was softened as well. So now I'm gonna go ahead and serve myself up. At this point, my stove is a wrap. I'm gonna have to give it a good deep clean tonight, but that's okay. We have three amazing soups, and you know, <laughs> it's worth it. Get some of those potatoes in there. And now I'm gonna go for the broth now that I got all the heavy stuff in there. Yum, that looks amazing. Now I'm gonna take it over to the other station carefully so that we can garnish the soup. I'm gonna garnish it with a little bit of extra parsley. And this soup is delicious with garlic bread. Uh, unfortunately, I'm short on time today because today is Saturday and I have an event to go to with my cousins, but normally I definitely would have hooked up some garlic bread, but. I'm gonna go in with a little parm right on top. Yum. Parmesan rain is the best. And now I wanna just sprinkle a tiny bit more parsley on top of that Parmesan. Make it look pretty, you know. A little more. And there we go, let's taste it. Okay, you guys, the soup is all ready and I am going in for a taste. It's smoking hot. Um, like I said, I normally would make some cheesy garlic bread to go with this, but time is working against me today. I literally have to leave in a little bit. So I'm actually gonna be making the third soup tomorrow for Sunday dinner. But um, you know, I'll be back with y'all right here. Oh, it's the broth for me. It's that garlic. The garlic with the Parmesan. Oh, this soup never get old for me. Let me get a bite with a little bit of everything. I need some sausage, I need some kale, I need a potato. But here we go. That's the bite. I sound like B-Love's Life. <laughs> I love B-Love's Life, y'all. I watch her all the time. Okay, I'm going in. Mmm. Mm. my god my god if you ain't never tried this sausage kale and potato soup try it your man your family your kids your wife whatever they're gonna be on you about this soup it just sticks to the bones the potatoes and stuff and the sausage and then the red pepper flakes give it a nice kick 
The broth is creamy. It's so good. As long as you don't over season it, you can't mess it up. So don't go too heavy with the, the salt. You can go heavy with pepper, but not with salt. Because the chicken broth has salt in it already. I, I don't use low sodium chicken broth. I use regular chicken broth in this. So don't over season it and you straight. Hmm. Let's try the bread. The bread is soaked up. I did slice me a little piece of my baguette over there. I got a little baguette. So I did slice a little piece of that. But it then soaked up the soup. Mmm. Mmm, 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 mmm. All right, y'all. I gotta go. We got one more soup in this video. So I'm gonna make that happen right now. Okay, guys, so day two of making the soup is here. Sunday dinner is in full effect. So we're gonna be making a really quick soup. I'm not even making a large pot. I'm gonna be using my medium-sized caraway pot. And once again, this will be linked in the description because you know you can get caraway at Target now and you can get it at Bed Bath & Beyond. You can buy the actual caraway sets at Bed Bath & Beyond. And like I said, this is not sponsored. I have worked with caraway in the past. This is not sponsored. Their pots are the bomb. That's all I'm saying. Anyway, we're gonna be making a medium-sized pot since it's just gonna be me and my sister eating this. So I'm gonna turn you guys around like I did before and show you the ingredients and then we're gonna make the soup. This is a quick one because as you know, shrimp doesn't take long to cook and this is a shrimp bisque. So let's get into it. I'm gonna turn y'all around and we're gonna get into it. Really quick, let's run through the ingredients for the shrimp bisque. You're gonna need some diced onions, which you know I buy the prepackaged diced. You're gonna need Parmesan, which I'm going to grade. I told you guys I don't skimp on Parmesan. I prefer to grade it myself because it just tastes better. Also, you're gonna need some coconut cream. This is a can from Trader Joe's, but you can get any brand, or you can just get coconut milk in the can. You don't have to get the cream. I'm also gonna use some seafood stock. I'm gonna have some tomato paste in there because it gives it a nice pink color and also makes the flavor a lot richer this is a shrimp bouillon so I'm gonna add a little bit of that to the soup seasonings cayenne pepper um, smoked paprika granulated garlic salt and pepper and I also have heavy whipping cream I have garlic which I always keep frozen garlic in the freezer I grade fresh garlic and just put it in the freezer so here's my little container of freshly grated garlic so we'll be adding a little bit of that for a small amount of garlic flavor because we don't want it to overwhelm the shrimp then of course I have my raw shrimp peeled and deveined shrimp from the bag and these are like a medium size shrimp I guess you could say and I have about 15 here parsley and I'm gonna make some garlic bread to go with this soup so yeah those are the ingredients let's start getting them into the pot I went ahead and added a little olive oil to the pot and I went in with my onions. I also went in with my cayenne pepper, smoked paprika, granulated garlic, and I'm basically just letting the onions get translucent while the seasoning sort of just kind of blend in and coat the onions. Um, the smoked paprika, sorry for the noise, I got a habit of beating on the side of the pot, but the smoked paprika is gonna give the soup a nice color, but also this tomato paste is gonna give it a nice color as well so I'm gonna go ahead and add a nice squeeze of that and this is also gonna add more body to the soup so you just want to add a nice little squeeze of that and let it cook off that sort of metallic taste a little bit now I'm gonna go ahead and go in with my garlic I'm just using about that much of the minced garlic. And that is fresh garlic. I freeze it, so it looks a little weird, but that's because it's coming out the freezer. So I'm gonna let that cook just for a minute, then I'm gonna go in with my liquids. Okay, so now that the garlic is nice and fragrant, I don't want it to burn, so now I'm gonna go ahead and go in with my liquids. I'm first gonna be adding that coconut cream to the pot. And I'm gonna add the entire can because this is a rich soup. Bisque is very rich. And then I'm gonna go in with some of my seafood stock. I'm gonna gradually add that because I don't want the soup to be too thin. I want it to be a little bit thick. And so that coconut cream is gonna help that out a little bit as well as the Parmesan and so forth. So that's gonna be enough for now. I'm gonna just let that come to a simmer, and then I'll add the rest of the ingredients, which is the Parmesan, the shrimp, the parsley, and get my garlic bread in the oven. Okay guys, so the soup is starting to simmer. We're gonna get back into that, but before we do, I wanted to just show you 
my garlic toast. So in a bowl, I have some butter. I use salted butter and I don't add any salt to it. Granulated garlic, which is basically garlic powder, parsley, Parmesan cheese, and I think that's it. Fresh garlic, if I didn't mention that. So I'm just gonna rub some on my toast. I like to put it on nice and thick so that cheese can melt. I put a lot of cheese in it. So it's gonna be nice and melty. Just gonna rub that on each toast. Like I said, it's just me and my sister today. Shout out, sister, say hi. She's holding the camera. Hello. <laughs> if you guys don't follow my sister, she is an amazing travel blogger. She has the most inspiring and really cool content. And where can we follow you? Discovering Eli. So that's Discovering Eli. You can find her on Instagram. I'll leave her Instagram in the description. I've left it a few times and quite a few of you are already following her. So make sure you check her out. She's helping me out today, so uh, yeah. All right, now that it's all smeared and ready, we're gonna put this in the oven, let it brown up a little bit, and then it'll be ready for the soup. Yep. So now that our soup has come to a nice simmer, we're gonna add the final ingredients. That's gonna be my shrimp bouillon cube. That's gonna dissolve pretty quickly, so I'll drop that in now. I'm also gonna add my Parmesan cheese, and my sister grated this for me. It's about about a cup and a half, I'd say. I'm also gonna go in with a nice handful of parsley to give the soup some color, some pizzazz. I'm also gonna go in with a cornstarch slurry, and I don't know if I mentioned that while I brought up the ingredients, but this will thicken this soup very nicely. If you don't want to add cornstarch, some people don't like it, you can always add some mashed potato to this. Um, you can also use an emulsifying blender, which I am gonna use that a little bit later before I serve the soup to break up the shrimp a little bit more. But I'm gonna give that a quick stir and that corn starts sticking that soup up real quick. So now we're gonna go ahead and go in with our shrimp that I've finely diced. And I'm gonna get every bit of that, y'all. Just hold on, let me get my, my trusty little silicone spoon to get the rest of that shrimp out of there. There we go. Give that a stir. And once the shrimp is added, Basically, you got about two minutes to turn off the soup. Like, do not overcook the shrimp. We want them to be nice and tender. And I'm also gonna use my emulsifying blender to break them up a little bit more to make this more of a bisque. So don't overcook your shrimp, guys. Um, now that my shrimp have been added, I'm gonna just maybe let the soup go one more minute and then I'm gonna turn it off because the shrimp will continue to cook with that residual heat from that smoking hot soup. So you don't need to let the shrimp cook and cook and cook. They're just gonna get rubbery if you do that. So about a minute in, you wanna go ahead and turn it off. And if the soup is too thick, once you add that cornstarch slurry, you can always add more seafood stock to it. But I think I like the thickness that it is and I'm gonna blend it a little bit too. So you guys can see how it's coating the spoon nicely. Those pieces of shrimp are already turning pink. So I'm gonna go ahead and turn my soup off and it's pretty much ready to serve. Let's just blend it up a little bit. Okay, so I have my emulsifying blender here, my handheld blender. This is by Kilitos, and I got this from Amazon. It comes with various attachments. It comes with a frother, it comes with an attachment that's a whisk, and it also comes with a cup that you can use it as a food processor. So this part detaches, and you can actually just attach it to the cup and use that food processor. And it also comes with a cup that you can use it as an actual blender, like to make smoothies. So, but I'm gonna be using the blade to emulsify my soup so we're just gonna put that in and I'm gonna turn that on and I'm just gonna blend up and break up those shrimp a little bit more it's gonna make the soup nice and thick and it's gonna also like I said break up the shrimp a little bit and I'm just doing it in pulses so that the shrimp don't get too broken up I do want some pieces to remain All 
ready. So the shrimp are nice and broken up. There are still some big pieces in there, but most of it has been shredded pretty good by that handheld blender. So the soup is ready. It's ready to serve. We're gonna go ahead and plate it up, garnish it up, get the garlic bread out of the oven, and we're gonna sit down and eat. Our garlic bread is out of the oven, nice and toasty. I got my bowl here ready to serve us up, and the soup is piping hot and ready. So let's go ahead and serve it up, garnish it. And me and my sister are about to eat, y'all. Like, this ain't just for show. And y'all know I'm gonna make a mess on the stove. Like I told y'all last time, I do clean my stove after I cook. But you know, during the cooking process, who cares? About the stove getting a little messy. That looks amazing. It smells so good. I'm gonna garnish it a little bit more parsley. That's enough. And then garlic bread. And that's it. Shrimp bisque, ready to eat. Gonna be my taste tester. My sister can really cook. So she's a harsh critic because she cooks better than me. And she can cook anything, Asian food, everything. She's she's a really good cook. Mm, what do you so think? Good. Is it good? It she so likes good. it, yay! She mm. likes it. So oh my God, I'm so glad. Um, y'all know me and my sister are twins. Um, we're identical twins. A lot of y'all ask about my sister, like why does sister never be in the videos and stuff? She's always around, like she films for me a lot. So she's a lot of times she's the person holding the camera helping me out. But um, she's always around, we always together. We spend a lot of time together, but yeah. Mm -hmm. I'm so glad she liked it because like I said, my sister can really cook. She's an amazing cook. And if y'all follow her Instagram, she does do like cocktails and all kind of stuff, food. Like she, mm -hmm. she really, she's amazing and very inspiring too, y'all. So make sure you follow my sister at Discovering Eli. But yeah, we're gonna sit down and eat. We're gonna have some sangria. She brought a nice bottle of sangria. Mm -hmm. So we're gonna sit down and just have some sister time, y'all. Thanks so much for watching. Stay tuned for more Cook With Me videos and stay tuned for my sister's YouTube channel. Um, I'm convincing her to start one. So she's gonna start one too. Um, she's amazing. Her content is really, really good. So mm -hmm. I'm glad she is. So yeah, we'll see y'all in the next one. Bye y'all. Peace. Bye. Peace. <laughs>